But first, we're going to go and hear from our other speaker for the evening, Dr. Carrie Gelb. Dr. Gelb spent the last three years traveling the continent and Europe producing a feature-length documentary entitled Open Your Eyes. It was released in 2020. Upon its release, he launched the Open Your Eyes podcast that delivers weekly episodes focusing on all aspects of health, and we'll be showing that film later today. He has also been interviewed for radio and television on topics related to ocular health. He frequently lectures on the diagnoses and treatment of macular degeneration, glaucoma, and diabetes. He has extensive knowledge and expertise on the evaluation and fitting in specialty or hard to fit contact lenses. Man, I really should probably get a pair of those for myself. <laughs> He's also certified in the evaluation and management of corneal refractive therapy contact lenses. He is committed to providing the highest quality of care to his patients. All right, so now we're going to hear a presentation from Dr. Gelb. Tell us a little bit about this film that you're going to be doing and what you've experienced. Okay, well, thank you. I, I certainly appreciate it. Uh, I want to thank David and Rudy and uh, for inviting me today and sharing the virtual stage with the esteemed neuro-ophthalmologist, Dr. K. I certainly appreciate that. We appreciate you. Thank you for joining us. So here's the outline of what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about new technology in the eye. The eye is a biomarker. There are close to 300 systemic disease states that can manifest in the eye. It's because the eye is so complex and made from many different embryologic tissues. But I'm going to focus on diabetes, Alzheimer's, cataracts, and macular degeneration. And I'm going to leave you and your audience with a 10-point plan to prevent the leading cause of blindness macular degeneration. The eye is the ultimate diagnostic biohack. It's the secret biomarker hiding in plain sight. Primary eye care doctors are the ideal medical providers to screen for early diabetes. Eye doctors see two and a half times more patients compared to primary care or family care providers where they might have their blood drawn. The evolution of technology allows the eye to become a very early biomarker for systemic changes related to diabetes and other systemic diseases. Up in the left-hand corner is Charlie Babbage. He invented the ophthalmoscope back in 1847. The present-day ophthalmoscope that most physicians use could see about 100 microns of resolution. But as technology has improved, we have these retinal cameras that could see in the back of the eye and take pictures at 10 to 15 microns, allowing us to see the microcirculation in the body. Disease happens in the microcirculation uh, very, uh, very often before the macrocirculation in the body. This is what the instrument looks like. Today's, the new instrument that's coming out soon will be handheld and portable. The way the instrument works, it takes different uh, LEDs of different nanometer wavelengths and slices and dices the retina into 12 different layers. Different layers of the retina correspond to different diseases, either systemic or ocular. I'm particularly interested in the 580 yellow wavelength because it highlights the oxygenated hemoglobin, making the retinal vascular highly visible allowing me to see the smallest capillaries in the body and these tiny microaneurysms. Here's a picture of the back of the eye. Down here on the bottom, at the end of this blood vessel, you can see this little bulb. That's a microaneurysm. I was the first eye physician to, uh, to discover microaneurysms through multispectral imaging. Through many tests, we found that my microaneurysms in the eye are correlated with insulin resistance, either pre-diabetes or diabetes. I published my findings in the Journal of Diabetes, where we correlated microaneurysms with uh, fasting insulin and two-hour insulin. This is a picture when I see somebody that has microaneurysms or little hemorrhages, this is the blood test that I do. So if somebody wants to take a picture of it. Our goal as physicians is we want to find patients when their glucose tolerance is impaired or they have hyperinsulinemia way before they become diabetic 
and they get the they get the sequelae of diabetes. Prevention is better than cure. Now here's the diabetes retinal spectrum. Up at the top, you can see the microaneurysm I spoke about, and in the second picture is a little retinal hemorrhage. Those pictures we cannot see with our ophthalmoscope. We need the new technology of multispectral imaging or a technology that we can see between 10 and 15 microns. Soon we'll have technology to allow us to see one micron. On the bottom of the spectrum, now we can see with our ophthalmoscope and standard fundus cameras. The last picture here is when the patient starts getting these new blood vessels in the eye. Uh, we call it NVD or NVE. When that happens, the average lifespan of that patient is three and a half years dying from cardi cardiovascular disease. Hyperinsulinemia can affect every part of the body from head to toe, just like, hyper, uh, glyce just like elevated glucose. This is another technique that we use in our office, OCT angiography. What it does, it takes picture of the little capillaries in the eye. They're indicative of the little capillaries the rest of the, in the rest of the body. When we see these capillaries, but up and to the left, we see this dark spot. This dark spot means that the capillaries are dropping out. They're starting to get ischemic. We're losing, the, we're losing them. We're losing them from either pre-diabetes or diabetes. If we could pick them up early, we could intervene with functional medicine uh, techniques. Down at the bottom, this is somebody who has macular degeneration. They have dry macular degeneration that's becoming wet, and it's able to pick up these little flowers of blood, abnormal blood vessels. OCT angiography also allows us to see the microaneurysms. Postprandial insulin assay, which is what we used in our study that correlated with the microaneurysms, are the earliest biomarker for diagnosing prediabetes, type 2 diabetes, and increased cardiovascular risk. Driven by added sugar, which drive coronary heart disease, insulin resistance, and hyperinsulinemia. So in conclusion of this section, primary eye care is the ideal channel for screening for microaneurysms. Early detection is the key to prevention. There are 300 systemic diseases that can manifest in the eye. These are different categories, vascular, autoimmune, neoplastic, infectious, even side effects to medication. Many times with these systemic diseases, they present in the, in the eye first before in the rest of the body. Some examples, diabetes, hypertension, thyroid eye disease, uh, zoster and simplex, Lyme disease, and certain cancers. Now, who should have lab tests when they go see the eye doctor? I'm going to highlight just one of the long list. This is a cataract, a clouding of the lens inside the eye. So young patients that have cataracts are at risk for Diabetes, there are five studies that show they have greater risk for cancer, and there's a type of cataract that shows that they're at greater risk for getting Alzheimer's disease. Also, side effects from medication. OCT angiography also allows us to, to look at the back of the eye to see if you're at risk for Alzheimer's disease. The future goal is to use OCT angiography to detect Alzheimer's disease early so we can refer to people like Dale Bredesen who could use techniques to prevent the progression of Alzheimer's. What OCT angiography does, it takes a picture of the blood vessels in the eye and you can see these little tiny capillaries, the blue hair compared to the blue hair is starting to drop out, which mirrors the blood vessels in the brain. Also in the eye, there's a, the middle layer between the retina and the white part of your eye, the sclera, is a choroid. That's the most highly vascularized tissue in, in the body. Those blood vessels start to drop out, and that's a, that's a sign of Alzheimer's with, with OCT. This is another OCT picture, and what, what we're seeing is the little nerve fiber layer, the little nerves making up the big nerve are starting to drop out, called the retinal nerve fiber layer. <clears throat> Let's turn our attention to macular degeneration, the leading cause of blindness in the U.S. There are about 4 million people that are blind in this country from macular degeneration. So what has changed? What causes macular degeneration? Well, ophthalmologist and researcher Dr. Chris Kenobi, modern-day Weston Price, has looked at this extensively, and he found out before 1900, there was basically nobody in the U.S with macular degeneration, cancer, cardiovascular disease. But what's changed since then? 
Well, which changes man-made processed food and approximately 63% of the American diet consists of four refined nutrient deficient processed foods. The worst of which is polyunsaturated fatty acids, refined flour, trans fats, and sugar is what Dr. Kenobi has felt is the cause of macular degeneration. But macular degeneration should simply not be considered an eye disease, but rather a systemic vascular disease. And it's more common in people who have inflammatory disease, such as metabolic syndrome. Here's a picture of macular degeneration where the back of the eye starts to degenerate, and we start to get these bubbles. These bubbles are filled with lipids, inflammatory cells, and breakdown of the tissue. Just the presence of one of these large drusen, that's what they're called, drusen, doubles the cardiovascular risk of that patient. So how do we prevent macular degeneration? Well, we look at the dynamic trio, lutein, zeaxanthin, and mesozeaxanthin that make up the macular pigment in the back of the eye. The more macular pigment, the less risk you have for macular degeneration. Macular pigment also filters out the blue light. So if you have low amount of macular pigment, you'll be much more sensitive to light. We call that photophobia. You'll have more trouble with glare. You'll have trouble going from a dark room to a light room like a movie theater. And here's an instrument that measures macular pigment. Macular pigment is often considered as internal sunglasses because it also, it, it also uh, blocks, the, when the blue light comes in, it prevents free radicals. So where do we, how do we build macular pigment? We build macular pigment from carotenoids. Carotenoids uh, are pigments that are in plants and they protect the plants from photo damage. So there are 800 carotenoids in nature, but there are only three in the eye, lutein, mesozeaxanthin, and zeaxanthin. So where are these dark, so where are these carotenoids located? Well, your body can't make them. You have to get lutein from green leafy vegetables such as kale, spinach, collard greens, zeaxanthin from orange peppers, goji berries, mesozeaxanthin in the flesh of trout or shellfish, but it's not very abundant in our diet. So we need the body to convert lutein to mesozeaxanthin. That's why it's good to take a supplement, as Dr. K said, that has mesozeaxanthin in it. So where do we find these, these lutein and zeaxanthin? Where do we find them in these vegetables? And you can see in this picture here. But here, look at goji berries, how much zeaxanthin is in goji berries. I consider goji berries a super a superfood. It has 18 amino acids, 21 trace minerals, and has more vitamin C than an orange. So healthy benefits of macular pigment. We want to build up our pigment because it helps us going from a dark room to a light room like a movie theater. So if we have trouble adapting, it might be because we have low macular pigment or we're starting to get macular degeneration. It helps with light sensitivity, glare, helps us seeing at dusk. It helps with contrast, so it helps us easier to read. I'm really interested in that it helps our temporal processing speed for people that play sports such as baseball or tennis. And it also helps with computer fatigue, just like Dr. K mentioned before. I want, to take our, I want to take your attention to my last topic, which is cataracts. Again, which is the lens inside the eye becoming cloudy. How do we prevent cataracts? Well, we prevent cataracts by keeping our blood sugar normal, not smoking, and not drinking too much, and eating foods with dark green leafy vegetables, such as lutein, zeaxanthin, and vitamin C. There was a very interesting study where they looked, at, they looked at twins, and they looked at them after 10 years, and the twin that had consumed the most vitamin C had a 33% decreased risk of cataracts. And patient, in another study, patients who consumed 10 milligrams of lutein and zeaxanthin decreased their risk of cataracts by about 26%. I wanna leave you with my 10 point plan to prevent macular degeneration. Number one is things we wanna avoid, such as smoking, weight gain, the big belly, metabolic syndrome de increases the risk of macular degeneration by two to three times. We wanna want avoid artificial sweeteners. The one that I do like is D-ribose. It's part of uh, Sinatra's awesome foursome. It's actually used in Europe for congestive heart failure. But side effects of D-ribose is tachycardia, so you gotta be careful you don't take too much of it. And it could, and it could affect your sleep because it, gives, it helps make ATP, and so it gives you energy. We wanna eat foods with omega-3s in it. High amounts of omega-3s decrease the risk of AMD by about 
40%. We recommend an anti-inflammatory paleo type diet, foods that contain lutein and zeaxanthin, spices to decrease inflammation. AMD is an inflammatory disease. So we want to decrease inflammation. We want the vitamin D level to be optimal in your body, between 50 and 80 nanograms per ml. If we could get it there, we could decrease the risk of AMD by about 40%. Regular uh, stress reduction and exercise. Exercise about 35% uh, reduction. B-complex. Uh, we want you to take a B-complex if you have high homocysteine. Digestive enzymes. It's often said it's not what you eat, but it's what you digest. There was a very, there's very interesting studies on lutein and zeaxanthin in the serum. When lutein and zeaxanthin is high in the serum, with zeaxanthin, you decrease the risk of AMD by 90%. Uh, lutein decreases it by 70%. And with cataract, zeaxanthin de decreases it by, uh, by about 70%. But if you just eat the foods, it decreases by 40%. Because it's not what you eat, it's what you absorb. These are the tear-off sheets I give to my patients on preventing macular degeneration, my 10-point plan. This is diabetes. These are the tests that I talked about, uh, multispectral imaging, o uh, OCT angiography, and measuring macular pigment. And I just want to leave you with this real quick case. This is a patient of mine who had microaneurysms and drusen. We put, her, we put him on my 10-point plan, and after three weeks, he looked like that. So thank you for listening. Please uh, tune into my podcast. Half the podcasts are eyes where we, we, we interview eye doctors, optometrists, ophthalmologists, vision scientists, and the other half is functional medicine doctors, such as people like Robert Lustig and Ted Naiman. And I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much.